So what do we have? We have a wall, and then we have this cylinder adjacent to the wall. And that cylinder has a particular radius. That radius of the cylinder R is 0.1 foot, one tenth of a foot. Okay. And we have a cable attached to the wall, and that cable comes down. They don't tell us the length from where it's attached to the wall to the middle of the cylinder or anything like that. You're looking for that information. But all they tell you is that there's an angle of 30 degrees. And then it's going to come down. It's going to hit the edge of that cylinder. Now, is it going to hit it over here or somewhere up here? Somewhere up there. But then it's going to wrap that cable or belt, if, which, which has friction, contact with that cylinder. And then it's going to come straight down, true? Because you're pulling straight down. And they pull down with a load of 50 pounds in that belt or cable. It departs at a horizontal point of departure, but it has contact right there. Okay, now, let's play this game. Let's say this angle, 30 degrees, goes up to maybe 60 degrees. If it went up to 60 degrees and the diameter didn't change, then wouldn't that point have to move down here to be able to get 60? And then wouldn't that contact point scoot over? Let, let's say the angle went up to 90 degrees. What? Well, that would mean that the cable is like this. True? And where would it first make contact with that cylinder? Straight up, right? And so at 90 degrees or 60, so, but anyway, at 30 degrees, now that we've thought about that for a little bit, we come back to 30 degrees, can you get this angle right there? And if it was, if this angle up here was 60, or if it was 90, that that other angle of contact would be 60 or 90. And I think that may have been a stumbling point or a difficulty for a lot of people. Okay. Okay. Now, now another thing is, is this object has a weight w. Okay. And so, if there's no friction between the belt and the cylinder or the wall and the cylinder, what's going to happen to that cylinder? It's going to fall. Isn't it going to fall? Because of the weight in the gravitational field. But what they say is the friction with this one is so large that you can treat that wall as no slip, meaning it's super high friction. It's, it's not going to slip. It could rotate about the contact with the wall, but it's going to have a large uh, vertical force in preventing slip. But over here, for the belt in contact, you have mu sub s, and that's 30%, 0.30. If the cylinder is going to fall, it's going to pivot around that contact point. Did they label that contact point? If not, let's call it A. It's going to pivot around that contact point, not slipping it, A, just pivoting, and it's going to slide on that belt. All right, now that you know which way it's going to fall, right, which of the two tensions in the belt is greater? And this is a clicker question. Is the tension in the belt here, let's call that, I don't know, let's, let's do this. Which tension is greater? The tension down, answer A, or the tension in the belt going up, answer B. Which tension in the belt is greater? If they don't have the same tension because of the friction. And it's B. The tension up is higher. Why? Why is it higher? So I know that some people missed it, but why is it higher up? Because it's having to support the cylinder, the drag, the, the cylinders want to rotate. It's, so if I zoom in, here's that cylinder, right? And the belt is pushing on the cylinder like that in little segments to help keep it up. Hence, the, the, if I focus on the belt, it comes down and then does this. The belt is feeling forces down 
from the cylinder on the belt. Hence, this is our T2, and that's our T1 in our belt friction equation, which was T2 is equal to T1e to the mu beta. True? All right. So this is T1 equal to 50. This is tension up here, T2, pulling up. And we calculate T2 is 50 times the exponential of the coefficient of static friction times that contact angle, which is hard to get. 30 degrees, but do we put it in degrees or do we, yeah, you've got to be in radians. So it's pi uh, divided by 180 times 30. You convert it to radians, true? All right, when we make that calculation, the upward tension comes in at 58.504 uh, pounds. Let me ask the show of hands. How many people remember if that number was correct What their solution? Did you get that far in the solution? Did you get that far in the solution? You did? Okay. So a lot of you got that far in the solution. That's pretty far because I think it's at this point it's pretty easy. I mean, the beta was hard, knowing which tension's higher. Okay, because if I do a free body diagram of the segment of the cable, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut in here. I know it's getting cluttered, but I'm going to do a free body diagram. Let me do it right here. Clean this up. I'm going to do free body diagram, complete cylinder, and then a little segment of the cable. I'm going to cut the cable right there, come in and cut right between the wall and that. So I end up with my cylinder. I end up with A in the X. I end up with A in the Y. That's at contact. I end up with the weight in the center. I end up with a T2 coming up at an angle of what? This is 30 degrees up from the horizontal. And then I end up with the T1 going down. Did I leave anything of importance off of my free body diagram, or do I have them all? Clean up this subscripts. Thumbs up if you like it. All right. What we're asked to solve for is that magical weight, which is our limiting weight to keep it. If, if W gets too big, it'll slip. So it's our maximum weight. So we know this one, 58.504. We know this one, 50. We don't know AX or AY, and we don't even care about them, do we? So what do you want to do to get the maximum W for equilibrium? Sum of the moments about A. And so when you do the sum of the moments about A, must be equal to zero, true? Now, there's a little challenge. You have to best, I think, is to decompose this T2 and the T2 in the X and decompose it in the T2 and the Y. And then you have to get that moment arm for each of those. But that's okay. We've done these. That's, that's just a little work, but conceptually it's okay. So let's just do that. We have uh, hmm, uh, T2 in the X, which is... T2 times, if this angle, uh, let me do it back this way. Vertical, vertical, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, right? So I pick off T2 and the X is equal to T2 times the sine of 30. Does that do that right? And then the moment arm distance, uh, let me just put it in the moment equation. So I pick off T2 sine of 30 degrees. And then I have a, a moment arm distance of uh, 0.1 times the sine of 30. It, it's this distance right there, 0.1 times the sine of 30. Because this is our hypotenuse. OK, keep going. Um, and then I have T2 cosine of theta, that's my other T2y. Then I have 0.1 plus, I'm sorry, 0.1 times 1 plus the cosine of 30. So I come out one complete radius, and then I come out uh, cosine of 30 times that radius. All right, both of those are making it want to spin. And then you have in the uh, counterclock, sorry, clockwise, then you have the weight times the moment arm distance of uh, 0.1, and then you have T2 plus T2 
times a moment arm distance of 0.2. One equation, one unknown for the weight, you find that then it's the maximum 1.7 pounds. Thank you very much for your attention. We'll see you next time.